Awesome. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Susie Flug Silva, and I'm the Siegel Program Director. And along with our Assistant Director, Carmela Belazer, we're so thrilled to be talking today about um, new politics for our session on answering the call, the, exploring the ways you can lead with new politics by running for office and beyond. Um, and so we're inspired by new politics and their leadership academies mission to build a movement to revitalize American democracy by recruiting, supporting, and empowering servant leaders who put community and country over self. So hearing that, you can definitely hear a connection to who we are as the Eli J. and Phyllis N. Siegel Citizen Leadership Program. So many of our fellows have asked for more of a way to think about expanding their leadership, reflecting on that, and considering running for office. So we're really honored to have um, new policy New Politics Leadership Academy's Chief Program Officer, Max Clow, here today to present to us, but also to be able to hear from Siegel Fellows, Rhea Price, Damon Ford, and Jess Kent, um, who have all participated in programming. Um, and, you know, some of our fellows, like Damon Ford, uh, was recently elected this past fall as a New Hampshire State Representative. Um, so some people are putting this into action in different ways, and we have others on the call who have run for office before. Um, so I will turn it over to you, Max, but we're grateful to you and um, to our speaker fellows today and to all of you for joining us. Awesome. Thank you, Susie. Really appreciate it. And really glad to be here. Um, uh, your fellows have already been a really powerful and important part of, uh, of the work we're doing at New Politics. I'm so glad uh, that Jess and Brian Demond are here to share their experiences and just a lot of mission alignment. So really grateful to, to get to spend time with you all. Um, I'm the Chief Program Officer at the New Politics Leadership Academy. So I am the guy who has designed our approach to leadership development. And we'll hear a little bit more about our programs. Before I was here, this is this month is seven years for me at New Politics. And before that, I was at City Year for 10 years. So uh, a decade in the national service space, and again, kind of adjacent to the Siegel Fellows through that. Before that, I was at Harvard getting a, a doctorate in leadership, and I'm also an alum of four different service programs, all kind of Jewish service international. So my world has been this intersection of service and leadership development, and I just feel very lucky that I get to, get to do this work. Um, so our agenda today, I want to get a little sense. We're going to do introductions. It's a small but mighty group, so um, hear who, who's on the call. Then I'm going to do a little bit of an info session, just so you understand a little bit about our programs and kind of what we offer. And then we're going to hear from um, from Jess and Bria and Demond, who have all been really closely connected and really a part of our work. So they'll tell you a little bit more from their perspective, and we'll have some time for Q and A. So that's what we're up for. Sound good? Yeah. So we'd love to hear from folks. Uh, just everybody gets kind of a minute. Who are you, and why are you here? So brief. I'm going to set a timer, but anybody willing to get us started to just Hi, friends and fellows. Um, I'm Jess Kent. I'm a 2008 Brandeis under, undergrad, I guess, fellow. Um, I interned at the Center for Progressive Leadership with founder Peter Murray back in the day for my summer internship, and then at the deputy mayor's office in Los Angeles through the Coro Fellowship in Public Affairs several years ago. I'm here today to learn from Bria and Demond's experiences, and I've always been in the cheering squad for Max's curriculum development. So I'm a geek of new politics, and I'm really happy to learn from you guys together. A geek and a partner. Uh, glad to have you with us. Awesome. Demond, how about you? Hey, folks. Uh, Demond Ford, a 2011 Siegel Fellow um, through the City Year Pipeline and also a New Hampshire State Representative and a huge fan of Max Clow as well, Jess. So you got a buddy on that one. And Demond and I got to hang out on Wednesday, and Jess and I got to hang out on another program last night. So uh, it's it's fun to be with you all. Bria, how about you? Hi, all. Bria Price, 2016 uh, fellow from the AmeriCorps alum stream. I also had the opportunity to go to the Heller School um, for my master's of public policy, graduated in 2019, and also got to be a part of the answering the call with uh, MPLA in 2017. So it's truly been a journey about where do I see myself in uh, my world of politics, but also my world of community development and how we're leading forward together. So I'm really excited to be here. I haven't seen Max in a while, but I'm so excited to work with Max and Max, your work has really left an impact in me and my heart and have translated it to a lot of spaces I'm currently in. So I'm really excited to be a part of this conversation, hang out with you all today. Awesome. Awesome. So glad to have you with us. And if anybody wants a challenge, you can go to the new 
New Politics Leadership Academy website and see if you can find the videos of Bria because she is prominently featured in our promotional videos on our website. Um, awesome. That's everybody, right? Did I miss anybody? I think that's the whole crew. All right. So I'm going to take about 15 minutes and do kind of an info session of who, like, who are we as an organization? Kind of how are we thinking about the world? And then what are our programs? And um, it's actually perfect timing for this because we just yesterday opened up the application process for our answering the call program, which is the perfect way for folks on this call to plug into things. So you are um, hearing these, he hearing this content at exactly the right time. All right, give me a thumbs up if you're seeing my, everybody seeing my screen? Yeah, okay, great. So um, we're gonna talk about who we are, a little bit of our programming, give you a little sense of our alumni. Um, the, the real people are gonna be more interesting than the website, I think, but, uh, but you'll get a sense of the alumni and some time for Q&A. So who is the New Politics Leadership Academy? Our mission is to revitalize American democracy by recruiting and developing servant leaders who put community and country over self. We think we need more servant leaders in politics. Um, a servant leader is someone who has dedicated their life to public service. That is you know, the folks on this call, people who value honesty, integrity, and put people and country above profit and partisan politics. There's a lot of folks out there, folks like the Siegel Fellows, um, not a lot of them are choosing to run for office and we're seeing if we can change that a little bit. So here's kind of our theory of the problem. This is a chart of the number of service veterans in Congress. Uh, and you can see in the 70s, 75% of members of Congress had served in the military and mostly you know, members of the greatest generation from World War II. That number is now below 20%. Uh, so we've really never had fewer uh, you know, elected leaders at the congressional level with that formative life experience of, you know, serving alongside people with very different backgrounds to achieve the mission and put the country first. And here's the chart of faith in American government. You know, and we, we won't say causation, but we do think there's a correlation here. One of the reasons why our politics is so uh, broken is because so few people who go into politics bring that ethic of service. So we think we can do better and we're out to build a movement to return service to politics. Uh, so the kind of entryway program that we have created is called Answering the Call. And this is for anybody who has served in the past and has a voice whispering in their soul, maybe you should, maybe you should step up and serve through politics. So it's not, it's not a candidate training. It's really for people, uh, servant leaders, who are just wondering, is this something I want to do? Um, so Answering the Call engages servant leaders in the personal reflection necessary to uh, understand what kind of leader they can become and in what ways they can lead through politics. Um, and how it works, it's a small group experience, uh, a lot like this group here. It's led by a, a trained facilitator and Jess. Bria, have you been a facilitator? No, but you've been through it, but Jess and Demond have both been facilitators for us. So we, we um, you know, the, the Siegel Fellow has been very involved in this. Uh, five to 20 servant leaders per group. The sessions are two hours long. And this time we're, we're trying to experiment. We're actually going to do uh, one quarter is going to be a one day. We're going to see if we can do it all in one day. So that's a, a new experiment for us. Um, but it's also free. Our, uh, you know, our value around this, we're, we, we want to remove as many obstacles and barriers as possible so that anybody uh, with any background can get in. So there's no fee. We do request an optional donation for anybody who has capacity and wants to support the organization, but it is free to participate. And the goals, we want to engage servant leaders in a meaningful reflection process, um, guide participants to achieve a higher level of inner clarity regarding their own sense of calling uh, to serve through politics. And we're really sincere. Uh, we knew from the moment we started this, they're going to pe be people who turn in words and really think deeply about this and realize politics is not for them. And we recognize, we, we honor that. You know, there's a lot of ways to serve. Um, politics is definitely not for everybody. Um, and we're not here to kind of subliminally convince people or, you know, pressure anybody into walking some path that's not for them. But we do trust, and, you know, we've been doing this now for seven years, we know that some of the folks who go through this turn inwards and really realize, you know, I won't have integrity with myself if I don't do this. And through that, we're building a pipeline of servant leaders who are committed to step up through politics. So those are the goals. Um, here's what to expect uh, for answering the call. It's an invitation and opportunity to discern within yourself whether you feel called to serve again through politics. So it's really a discernment process. Um, you'll complete reflection exercises, 
you'll have some really honest conversations with other servant leaders who are in this question in the same way. Uh, you'll have a chance to connect with a candidate in session four. So it's not just reflection. You get a chance to talk to somebody who's done this and you know get some real practical, real world sense of what it means. And we've been doing it for a while. You will, you will emerge with some greater clarity about how you're gonna continue to serve. And uh, happy to lift up some of our alumni. Pat Ryan, some of you might've followed his uh, campaign. He ran in New York State and just won. He was in one of our earliest cohorts. And it was in answering the call when he was like, you know, I think I want to do this. He's a West Point guy. And um, and 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 he he ran for one race and lost. And then he ran another uh, state level race. And now, anyway, now he's the congressman from New York's uh, 18th district. And uh, Phil Olale, um, who's in the house in Georgia, uh, another person who, you know, answering the call was the space where he said, yeah, this is a, you know, this is something I want to do. Um, so we don't just do answering the call. We also offer campaign staffing programs. The idea is you do answering the call and um, you get some clarity. Some people realize they want to be a campaign, a candidate. And some people realize they want to be a campaign staffer. And some people realize they want to be, you know, uh, uh, um, an active citizen in other ways. But for folks who want to be a campaign staffer, we offer a, a call time manager boot camp. Um, which that's a specific role on campaigns where you're helping the candidate raise money. It's actually this, this uh, it's a great entryway into a career in campaign politics. And uh, we give you a training around that. We just ran it, we, we, we do have an intent to apply form. So I think we're gonna do it again in January. Um, but over campaigns and finance, how to you know really make call time happen powerfully. Um, and we also offer foundations, which is our program for uh, people who come through answering the call and realize they want to be a candidate. So if you want to be a candidate, foundations would be the next step. And this starts to get a little more tactical. You know, answering the call really, really starts with a reflection. We call it the inner work. And we continue with that a little bit in foundations where you're starting to craft your, your core values and your public narrative, kind of how you're going to tell your story as a candidate. But you also start to think about fundraising um, and cultivating your presence as a candidate. Um, so it starts to move from just getting clear about your kind of, you know, your, your inner motivations and really starting to get tactical. Um, and, you know, it's very exciting to have Damon Ford here because we just piloted this this week uh, is our elected leaders program. Uh, we've always aspired that, you know, we get people when they're just starting to think about this and we follow them all the way through the process of kind of clarifying their values and their story and then running for office. And um, so we just ran our first elected leaders program for folks who are already in office like Demond. Um, so, uh, you know, help them improve their communication and negotiation skills, keep them connected with this cohort of servant leaders and just keep them developing skills. You know, it's not like you get into office and you're instantly um, completely fully formed. Uh, so we're really, excited to have created something that was uh, of service to those folks. And we just ran this here in Boston. It was an all day training in Boston. Um, and anybody who comes to our programs is part of our awesome and always growing alumni network. We recently uh, graduated our 2000th uh, graduates. So our alumni network is now, you know, 2000 people strong and they're just great folks and you can be part of the network. We offer, we just offered a presence training last night, which is how uh, I reconnected with Jess. So we offer programs for our alumni and there's also an alumni, alumni um, kind of database. So if you wanna find out who are the other alumni in your area or if you're gonna go to a city. So, and we have had people kind of get their campaign managers uh, from ATC alumni, that sort of thing. So it's a, it's a powerful network of fellow servant leaders. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we actually have uh, real live alumni here. So hope it's in, it, it, it's interesting. I guess before we jump into some testimonials, any kind of, uh, you know, questions about the information I just shared before we hear a little bit from our alumni here. Going once, going twice. All right, well, I am going to drop the application form in the chat before by the end of this. But um, Bria, can I pick on you to, uh, to say a little bit about your experience with NPLA? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I did NPLA answering the call in 2017, 2018. I um, can't remember the real time. 
but it was truly transformational because I came from the AmeriCorps background. I'm coming from the team base, doing service together, working together and really moving forward. And at that time in grad school, things turned into very individual space. Like I'm doing my own grades, I'm doing my own papers and my presentation. And things were just shifting in a way that I wanted to make sure what's my, my roots in doing this degree. And so I went into doing answering the call and just so happened some people from my grad school were doing answering the call at the same time and also other connects from the Boston area. And it brought me to an opportunity to just really just think about who Bria is and who Bria is in the world. So within the world, what's my own mission statement? How do I actually activate that mission statement? Is that something I want to then transform or am I really looking into things inwardly or looking at outward action to move forward? And so with the program, it allowed me to think internally, share my internal thoughts outwardly and get real-time feedback, real-time conversations, real-time challenges on my own thoughts, not to challenge that I was wrong, but to challenge for me to understand what I truly believe. So if I truly believed in building a community and how we actively hold each other accountable around that, I had a cohort that said, okay, Bria, how are you really going to do that? What is your focus? What's your drive? Like, not necessarily here are the tasks, but how do I actively want to move forward? And so I actually still stay in contact with some of them. We've actually done a replay of some of those resilience circles, which are super cool. Um, really? Yeah. Which is, it, it, we're surprised that we haven't been in full contact, but every once in a while, we're like, let's just do a quick connect and see where we are. Right. And some people's ideas have changed and some things have stayed the same. Um, and it's even evolved for me now that I'm in Georgia. And I know Georgia politics has been in front of a lot of people's uh, TVs. Um, it's definitely been a point of foundations for me to move forward. Awesome. Thanks, Priya. Mm -hmm. My instinct is let's hear from from uh, Jess and Demond as well, and then we'll just open it up to questions to everybody. So, Demond, go for it. Yeah. So, I do. Is there a prompt? Because I could ramble for a good forty five minutes. Appreciate it. Just a testimonial. How what's it been for you? Has it impacted your journey? Yeah, yeah. Uh, something that I I appreciate with Max and the and Emily, the founder of um, New Politics, is that. They're people centered, right? They're very concerned about the person. Yes, they want you to develop as a leader, right? But they're very people centered. Um, so obviously the background, New Max from City Year. Um, and then um, I, I can't remember how I got connected with New Politics, but I think I was part of the like first cohort of yeah, facilitators. Yeah. Um, went to Boston. It was like all day, like it felt like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. type of all day. Um, where we went through the actual um, ATC training um, to become facilitators. Um, and that experience was great. And then, as most of you know, I used to live in North Carolina, Charlotte, um, and was able to facilitate a group of folks there in Charlotte, which was fantastic. Um, and moved away, moved away from politics, you know, moved back to New Hampshire. Um, and that entire time, Max and the um, New politics folks, they were always in my inbox, whether it was a newsletter or just a check in or um, how's it going or are you willing to do another, you know, group of facilitations. Um, and then I decided to run. And of course, the first person who reached out to me was Emily from New Politics of like, hey, I know you're not a you didn't go through our training as a as a as a as, through a cohort, but we're willing to support however you you needed it. Luckily for me, um, I ran in a um, a race in which I had three counterparts. Um, so, uh, and two of the folks in that group were, I'm not going to say expert politicians, but they ran campaigns before. Um, so, a lot of the what you learn through the ATC um, programming and the coaching afterwards, I got from my peers who I was running with. So, I didn't necessarily need politics for that, but always felt supported. Um, and then um, they created the elected leaders program and um, had a great opportunity. I, I never get to sit with this person. Uh, we call her the Dean of the New Hampshire State. She's basically the longest serving state representative. Um, I don't get to chat with her because she's in leadership and I'm a newbie. So there's, you know, that difference. And so I was able to actually 
go through this program, this all day program with her, which I never would have gotten the opportunity to do on my own or through local politics. Right. Um, and so, yeah. And Emily texted me. She was like, here's my personal number if you need anything. Right. Um, so, again, people centered. That's what I really like about it. And you do feel that support. Um, and it it's important to have that especially if you're thinking about running and you kind of have some connections, right? I always tell people, I'm a, I'm a Siegel fellow. I have political connections. And of course, people are like, what's a Siegel fellow? And then I'm like, oh, this really cool thing that you will never be able to get. Um, and so recognizing like we have this support system here, but then it's, it's even better when you run um, um, now, like in the current state of our country, getting into politics can be dangerous mentally and physically. Um, and so having that support wherever you can get it um, is really important. And that is, um, Sam, that's exactly part of my problem was that I had just moved to New Hampshire like, you know, four years prior. Why would I run for office, right? I'm not, I'm not worthy of running for office. Um, but government and, and pol politics, it's, it's about people as well. And so everyone should be involved in it. And I think uh, New Leaders kind of puts that in the forefront. I mean, the whole basis is service. Um, so those who are already given some time of their life to others, you're just extending that by joining the world of politics. And I think um, new leaders, um, new leadership um, academy is really an opportunity for folks to take what they learn in service and then transform that to um, things that really affect day to day life. I think I shared with Max, I was in a pretty negative place on Wednesday about politics and politics in New Hampshire and being in that space really energized me so much that I kind of went um, white folding chair bashing yesterday um, with some some folks here in New Hampshire because they were trying to do some things that were just a big no no. So um, mm -hmm. it's always great to have those connections and that support. And when you are fresh new to politics, whether it's working in a campaign or being the the candidate, having that support is so important. So if you're considering it, recognize that you have fellow. Siegel Fellow support, and now you have new politics support. So it's like a, it's a win-win situation. I'm hoping that we get a new yeah. governor. I'm, I'm rooting. I mean, I guess our governor is not running again, but on the other side of the aisle, it's the same. So I'm hoping we get a new governor. Yes. We'll see. Awesome. And it was fun to hear that the, the Dean of New Hampshire politics is a VISTA volunteer from like 1966 or something. So she has her own service background. Awesome. Demar, thank you very much for that. Jess, how about you? Hey, friends. Um, so I'm really eager to see the Q&A part of this agenda later, and we can flesh it out so that it's not a infomercial. But for me, um, the Leadership Academy and New Politics in general has really been about self-reflection and strategic community expansion. Those are the main themes for me. And it actually, I remember at a Siegel retreat, we all sat down very, very late last night and wondered aloud, will the community of Siegel networks be activated for someone to run for president? And, um, you know, that really sparked a fire in me that was years ago um, to figure out how I can be supportive. And I think one of the nice things about the answering the call curriculum is that at the end, my favorite activity uh, talks about you know, whether we can see ourselves as an elected official, as an appointed individual, as um, an engaged citizen, or as a campaign staffer, and being able to see that politics and campaign life can exist from a variety of different streams and avenues, just like our Siegel Network does, was very eye-opening for me. Um, I started as a facilitator, uh, was trained by Max and Emily in Boston, I think, about seven years ago, uh, returned to Los Angeles where I led the ATC program in person. And then we moved virtually um, several years later. I really love to, to facilitate um, both in person and virtually, but I ended up participating, um, taking off the facilitator hat and putting on the participant hat. And so I went through the curriculum with another facilitator, which was super eye-opening as well. I saw how they led the sessions, which was similar, but yet different and unique from mine. And then as an alum of answering the call, I ended up doing the foundations program, the call time programming, um, some 
kind of one-off alumni workshops that they had and served on the National Service Council too. So I'm happy to chat with folks about anything, um, but maybe Max can answer the question in the chat about what a facilitator is. Yeah, you know, answering the call, it's a lot of reflection. It is not frontal presentations. It is not downloading information. So the people who lead that program are really facilitators who hold the space for conversation where people are really trying to think through their own mission, their own sense of calling. Uh, so that's why we call them facilitators. Is that is that helpful? Does that answer the question? So facilitators work for your organization and they present to you leaders from various communities on whether they want to answer the call to service, correct? It's actually a volunteer position, which is... Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, a couple of these folks were so early, like, I don't know if uh, like Jess and uh, Iman went through the program. They're, they're really um, from from way back. From, but usually now it's people who have been through the program or folks who have a lot of facilitation experience and are looking for a way to use that kind of professional expertise to support the country. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, they, they they run these, you know, facilitate these programs for us. Thank you. So, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But happy to open up to questions to anybody uh, after hearing from everybody. Thank you guys. And I will just say, you can chat me if you want to ask a question, but don't want it recorded. I can turn off the recording. So um, uh, feel free to chat me if that's something you want to go back. Anthony, what do you got? Well, foremost, just thanks to everyone that uh, talked about their experiences. My question is, as a civic leader, how do you communicate to constituents or individuals within your immediate circle or your neighborhood about the impact and the power of politics when they have such a disdain for just the word of politics? Mm -hmm. Anybody feel moved to take that one? I will, I will jump in because I actually very similarly had a kind of conversation like that on Wednesday with the group that we were with about the difference yeah. between politician and leadership, because I don't consider myself a politician. I just consider myself a leader. And I think um, a lot of times the best message is about leadership, right? If we say that's a bad politician, it's like, well, well it makes them bad. And then we list all these things. That's ultimately how that person is leading and, and on a particular issue. So um, I'll give a quick example here. Um, School funding and school schooling education here in New Hampshire is a hot to topic right now. Um, and you have people with a wide range of experiences with the school system, but also they're just their general ideas about what school should be like. Um, I always like to, and I, this is probably from years of doing service, national service, is starting with um, asking the question why, but also just that's where our, our conversation is laid is in the why. Like, why is this issue important to me as an individual, why I see it as an issue and important for you, and then asking them why that issue is important to them and, and to their community versus talking about the politics of the issue, right? We could talk about the impacts of why is it so hot in my community? Oh, because we don't have any trees or grass or we live in an urban concrete jungle, right? Um, how do we fix that? Um, not about the climate crises or like the politics behind that, but what is the real impact for individuals? And what I've learned as, um, as in my campaign is that people really love talking about themselves, um, which I do not, so I'm very shocked that I, I did run, but I hate talking about myself. I love boosting other people up and talking about their accomplishments and talking about them. And, but people love that. They love talking about themselves. So ask them, what about this issue concerns them the most? Why do they see an issue as an issue? Um, and once you start that conversation and they realize that you care about what they have to say, they're gonna, they're gonna one, a little bit get on your side, but also you just started a conversation and started building community in a way that they did not expect. Um, and that's usually how you win folks over. So I think that is a big thing is working with the why, diving in the why and getting behind the reason for the why. Love that. Yeah, and to jump in here from more of a grassroots uh, side, um, it's the people first. People, 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 people. And I think some things when people are asked, what do they think? 
they actually appreciate someone is actively listening, not listening to react, right? And so with a lot of the conversations, I actually just recently um, did uh, some camp knocking up doors, let's say, um, for multiple sclerosis and mental health services in Georgia. And a lot of the things people kept looking at me saying, Bria, you don't look like you're sick. I was like, well, you want to walk with me to my MRI? Because I can show you what's going on. But it was more so conversations, not just about me, but also how are you interacting with mental health? How do you use mental health services? Do you use mental health services? Because I think sometimes when we look into different words in the government, like politician, like healthcare, like global warming, it comes with different definitions that we think it's supposed to be, we should be thinking, but we're actually interacting with it day to day differently than where we are in based off of our title. So when you put people in the forefront and have them share their definitions, you find ways that you have commonalities, but then when people are ready to hear from you, that's also your open door to share about your experiences as well. Love that. Leotis, looks like you got a question. Yeah, so I've always seen myself on a like micro level of, I guess, service. I never really seen myself on the macro trying to, I say at one point I did try to see myself like on the big chain, change the whole system, burn everything down, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I found myself more now kind of being in the micro space of like individually working with the population I work with. How does that fit in one, I guess I have two questions. So one, how does that type of work fit within entering politics? Um, and then two, does the program itself help you identify what space in politics do you feel like you might be able to fit in? Um, I can jump in. You know, Emily Cherniak is the founder of uh, New Politics, and she came through City Year, and I also uh, came through City Year. And, you know, both of us have said we we originally viewed ourselves as service people, like we're youth workers. We're not political people, you know? Um, and grassroots is where it's at, and that's where the change happens, and, and let other people do that dirty political stuff. Except over time at City Year, you know, it became really clear City Year, like these core members were doing amazing things, the organization was having an amazing impact, and every two years there was a chance that the funding for AmeriCorps was going to be zeroed out. And we just kept realizing, like, um, on the issues that we cared about, people with political power had a lot of influence to make a difference on that stuff. Um, and, that, and, and this idea that we could be service people and, and leave the political stuff to somebody else, pretty, we, we both got to this place where like, that's, uh, that doesn't work anymore, you know? Uh, which which is, evokes a whole kind of reflection process and like, do I feel called to this? Is this something that I, I feel like I can do, you know? But it's exactly why we created this program because where there's, we know there's a lot of folks like you who have spent their life uh, trying to make change at the, at the front lines and the grassroots and, and learned a ton uh, about how to make change and how to work alongside people with different backgrounds. And that is exactly what we need our, in our political world. Um, but a lot of those folks just don't see themselves in the space. And we're trying to kind of help people um, cross that boundary, if that makes sense. So that's my answer. If, if anybody else wants to jump in, feel free. I think one of the incredible things about this network is that at some point in each of our lives, someone is going to ask us if we have thought about running for office. And answering the call at New Politics Leadership Academy allowed me the ability to respond positively and say, thank you so much for that compliment. I actually have gone through a program and I've decided I'm not ready or I'm not interested. But these are the other ways that I'm contributing to my community, et cetera. And for some folks that Max was talking about, you know, they went through this program and then they decided to run or they went through this program and then they decided to become a staffer. You know, I think that the engaged citizen stream in this curriculum is the most exciting because the self-reflection through these weeks of this program allows, at least it allowed me, and I hope that it'll allow other people as well, to really think through, reflect on, and activate some next steps, regardless of what we choose to do with our lives. And so I would encourage people to register, but I also would encourage folks to connect, you know, with other participants and see if this is a good program for you, because it is such a small commitment 
with a maximum and a much larger um, potential to make a change in our community and to really think through some hard questions in the privacy of our own home with the support of a cohort in each of these groupings. And so for me, it was really um, relaxing to think through these big topics and to be funneled through as a participant with a really esteemed facilitator who was able to ask me back questions. And I was able to network with people from all around the country who had various different um, foci or streams of professionalism, but we were all committed to service and we were all trying to ask answer the question and ask each other on repeat, how can we serve? Is it political or is it something else? Hope that's helpful, viewers. Damon, anything you would add there? Or should we open it up for another question? Yeah, it's something that I, I realized um, coming out of Wednesday was that um, because, as, and I'm thinking about you, Leo, just like you're so focused on your work that sometimes it, like you don't get the opportunity to reflect like that's something that I got out of Wednesday, like as a person, a legislator, we actually don't get to reflect on our leadership because we get, you know, you run on the issues, right? Like your campaign's all about whatever the hot button issue is, making a stance and um, previous federal person who ran the executive office, it was all about their personality, right? Like I am a strong leader because I am a strong leader versus like, does this guy ever even reflect on his leadership and how it's impacting his staff and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think um, new politics and the ATC program allows you to reflect and take a step back from your day to day. Like for me, it's like education. If you're not for public education and educators, like you're trash, right? But take a step back and say like, what what values do I hold as an individual and how do I wanna show up as a, as a servant leader? Um, we don't always get that time to reflect. And I, I, I think back to like city year years, right? Like they ask you to reflect all the time about your leadership, leadership. And when you get out of it and you get into the nine to five world, no one asks you to reflect on your leadership unless it's your performance review, which is based on your performance and not necessarily your leadership. Um, and so I think the opportunity to reflect on your leadership and how you want to show up will will guide you in a way that helps you connect more to your community, but also connect more to like, okay, what, why am I doing this, right? Again, answering that question of why are you interested, but also why are you, why do you want to take this next step? And I, I really appreciate that about the program. And I think it's quite helpful, right? Even at Siegel, we, we reflect, but not necessarily at the same point. Um, how do you, how do you do that on a daily basis? It's really difficult, right? We all live busy lives. And so to take that moment, and like Jess said, it's a short amount of time with the max amount of output. It's like, take that little bit of time and go through it. And you'll see the, the max output of what you your what is possible for you and your community. And I really do. And when I say a little bit of time, right? It's, it's a, every minute is a good chunk of time, but um, it's worth doing and having that reflection. Because even today, I'm like, getting ready for this and I'm running late and I'm like reflecting like, how can I be better organized so that I'm not five minutes late to my meetings, right? So um, it's it's helpful in that way. Awesome. Say now, what do you got? Sorry, I've been in the chat like commenting, but um, oh. so I've been thinking about like running and I know some people who have run, but it's just like, for me, it's just like, especially when you're a person of color or like someone with a marginalized identity, it's just like, it feels like a lot of the opposition or people who may not be in your corner always say that it's identity politics. And it's just like, how do you address that and like focus the center on like the platform that you're running on instead of just like, just reducing you to just like one visible part of your identity? Yeah, I mean, a couple answers come to mind. Uh, over 50%, I think it was like 55 percent of the participants in the last round were BIPOC and uh, you know so part of it is um, half of the participants in our program are BIPOC and have that perspective and are asking similar questions so you're able to kind of explore that with with fellow participants you know um, I will say answering the call really is like what's my mission and do I want to do this and if you uh, arrive at the place of I do want to be a candidate then foundations starts going a little deeper into that. Like, for how am I gonna tell my story and how am I gonna 
you know, start to think about dealing with stuff that could come at, could come at me at the, um, you know, on the campaign trail. So, uh, you know, I guess what I can say is we, we honor it. We honor that that is true and that's real. And um, part of that is what do you care about deeply enough to be willing to step up and say, this is what I'm, this is what I'm fighting for. And, and how do you be thoughtful about taking care of yourself while doing this challenging thing and connecting you with a, a group of other people of color who are, who are in the question in the same way and can really be a, a community around that. So that, that's my take on it. And uh, if anybody else wants to add a thought, feel free. Yeah, I want to add actually just for the end of the comments, all the sessions are confidential. Um, and in their sessions, you can be honest on anything. Um, one thing for me when I was in my sessions, those are some of the questions I was asking myself. Yep. I thought in that space, I'm not sure if my cohort's ready to hear me ask those questions out loud. And I felt more pressure in, internally because I kept them until I actually brought it up in my group and I was like, I just want to talk about these things. And when I talked about it, not to say that we had a final answer in that cohort, no, but I even felt comfortable in sharing my thoughts as well as finding my own answer in that. And so where do I find my own identity when it comes to being a Black woman, a light skin Black woman, a woman with locks, a woman that's very, very loud but can smile at the same time? Um, and I actually were able to become more confident in that and confident to say, where do I fit when it comes to politics in that realm? And so not to say that the answers are completely there, but I found myself in a position that I got over that first hump of saying, let me out really talk about it to then say, what other questions do I have? How does this potentially fit? And then have a connection. So one thing from uh, New Politics, a leadership academy that came during the pandemic was a Black resilience circle. It was one of our things, we did it virtually. We were committed, okay? <laughs> and in our commitment, yes, it started with an agenda, but then we, we kind of pushed away from that agenda. Yes, it was just like, how are we here from each other? What are things that we are talking about with others? We feel like we can't talk about with each other. We still have that resilient circle going. It's now been, we're in 2023, right? And so, those spaces were available to me because of the politics, because I'm a part of this network. And I know that there are other people around that are asking those same questions. I now have connections with those people to see what other people might think that are in the similar situation. I will just quickly say, I think um, fear and hesitation are um, uh, tools that we use as people of color to keep ourselves safe, right? Because um, I was quite fearful running. I'm, I'm in probably one of the oldest and whitest states in the union. Um, and, to, and to think young black guy again, Bria, like dreads, like I'm loud, y'all know this. And I also don't have a filter sometimes. I try it. I try to put on a filter. It, it breaks every day. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's the mechanics. Um, but the idea that once you get over that that fear and hesitation, there's so much support for your ideas and the issues that face our community, right? Um, outside of new politics and the support you get from there, right? Think about all the BIPOC groups that are looking for young people to get involved in politics, right? So you have, once you put your name out there, you're going to get so much support. But I will say, having that um, connection to whatever identity piece that you connect most with, connecting with those community organizations before you announce, right? Just saying, hey, I'm interested in doing this, right? So for me, it was the local NAACP. Um, and then we had a new office of equity here in the state of New Hampshire, um, connected with their director. Um, and we talked through what has happened with Black men who run in the state, right? Some great stories, some horrible stories, some that was on them stories. Um, and then when I announced, it was flood of support from Siegel, from, like I said, um, um, New Politics, all these organizations who are looking for young people to get involved. And when I say young people, because I'm, I feel like I'm middle aged at this point, um, the, when younger people get involved, they're so ready for us to do so. Um, and then they love how authentic um, BIPOC folks are, right? We we love our culture, whatever it is, whether it's Ghanaian or um, 
uh, Jamaican or whatever it may be, they're like, yes, we love that, right? Because you're not to not to say that you become a token, but you become the light for other folks who look like you and have the same ideas as you. And they want that to be put out there, especially if they support you and the issues that you support. So um, I would say connect with local organizations first and think about that, but recognize that fear and hesitation is, is part of our survival, but it is not the only tool that we have. And I, Anthony, I see your hand, but the one uh, thing I'd say is part of the way this is designed is uh, we teach a question finding process where everybody gets to come up with the, you know, like, what are the questions that are most alive for you when you think about this and then bring those things. And there's real power in kind of shining a light on these, these fears and doubts that often kind of live without being really fully examined. And I think it's part of the power of the program is to be able to just uh, discuss that and think it through and, you know, and, and, and just shine a light on something that often lives kind of unexamined. So anyway, hope that's helpful for you. Um, and yeah. I think it's time for one more question. Anthony, what do you got? Thank you. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear me, hopefully. Yep. Uh, Damon, when you were talking, something really just resonated with me. And that's the question I want to follow up with, with you all. Full transparency. I'm one of about three people of color in my office, in my official capacity. And I always have felt the barrier that I can't really express my ideals or say the things that I want because I need to filter the professional I need to be. And bringing that into the political arena when I'm going and talking to these people at the doors and I'm meeting with donors and I'm meeting to the business class, how do you stay authentic while talking? Like, how do I use my story of service to talk about what that did for me and why I think as a leader, I can use those tools to pass better budgets or to pass better to allocate certain grants. How do you how do you overcome that barrier of I can be my true self without trying to cater to my audience? Mm -hmm. Anybody want to take that? I I, I love um, first it's demands like duh like duh I'm the best politician in New Hampshire, um, yeah because I'm not. <laughs> um, I, I think, I think I, man, whew, this is a great question. Um, Cause right. When, like my place of work and what I do as a public servant actually mesh more than I would like, because I like to keep my professional life and what I do at home. So separate, but because of the, because of the role I play now, they're so meshed together. Um, I'm a, I, I cannot be demand. That's it that period, right? And so where I show up, where whether it's knocking on doors or in my professional role as like the associate director of Gear Up, right? You're gonna get demand, but it depends on what level of demand you get, right? So when I'm knocking on a door, um, I usually have my hair pulled, pulled back, right? Just so they can see my face because I'm not trying to get assaulted at a door. Um, but then it's also that connection of once they open the door, who do they get? And it's it's going to be demand, no matter who it is. I use uh, I use slang. I don't use the right contractions. I do use double negatives. I'm going to be me, no matter what, at the door and in my office. And I um, and I think a lot of times it is you got to hide who you are or change your language to fit in. And again, because the age I'm at, if I if you don't like me who I am, this ain't the space for me. Um, and I, and I, I'm also a big fan of like keeping my job, right? <laughs> I like money. Um, and how do I keep that, but not filtering myself exactly to, to fit in, you're going to get the same thing, but it's going to, it's just a different level. Um, and I find that having, um, support allies, right. Um, non-BIPOC allies is super helpful in the workspace, but also on the campaign trail. I actually have never gone door knocking by myself. Hmm. I, I always take a white woman because one it's they'll open the door for a white woman even if I knock and they don't answer and she goes to knock and then they answer and you're like oh you were home the whole time right uh, but recognizing they're going to get the authentic person I brought and they're going to get an authentic demand so you know the young white Jewish girl from New York and the black guy from the south you're going to get exactly how we talk how we talk um, but you're going to hear about the issues in a way that is us and authentic and compassionate and empathetic to to what it is um, 
So I would say give them different levels, Anthony. Don't give them 100% Anthony when they don't deserve 100% Anthony. Give them the 75% Anthony to, one, reserve that energy for yourself and your mental space, but also recognizing that you, you never know, right? Again, you don't know how someone's going to react to you. You just got to be prepared for their reaction with the best that you have. And so um, making sure that, that you're just giving them the levels in which they deserve to get, right? So. Awesome. Sorry, I do want to note that we're um, we're getting close to the time here. I, I do just want to say our philosophy is like we can't give you the answers, Anthony. But what we can do is hold a space where you can do the work to kind of sift through and find the the, the way to tell your story in the way that feels authentic for you. And that's that's uh, how we understand our kind of our our work as facilitators. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I do want to note I dropped the application uh, link that is now open. So if any of this sounds interesting and you're interested in answering the call, please fill it out. Also, I know you guys are plugged into networks of some amazing servant leaders. So if you know anybody else who might be interested, feel free to share this with any relevant networks because applications are now open and, and now's the time to apply. Um, I guess there's a couple more. Damon, you want to follow here? Yeah, I just want to say, I think I think for uh, ATC and, and Jess mentioned and Brea mentioned it, but it's not just for people who want to run for office. I think it is a great program for that friend who nonstop is watching CNN or like always talking about politics. Like, okay, enough with the couch couch sitting, right? Like get up, go to this training, right? Get some idea of how you can get connected and activate it and make a difference, right? It's not about just like having the knowledge about how politics works or who you hate and dislike or the policy you don't like, but what is that action that you're going to take to make the difference that you want to see and it may not be being the office holder it may be the the office key holder right you may be the person mm -hmm. with the passwords um not necessarily the person in the office so um if you have a friend like that even if it's not you who's like oh you know blah 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 all the time send them that application and get them signed up awesome and i, I just dropped my uh email in the chat, if anybody wants to reach out for anything, don't hesitate. I will just say we are such uh, such a deep mission alignment with the Siegel Fellows. It's an honor and a privilege to get to spend time with you and and would love to see more of you in our programs uh, in the future. So hope this was helpful and thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Max. Thank you so much, Bria, Damon, and Jess. Thank you to all of you for joining, for sharing, for thinking. Definite mission alignment here. And you know, you heard about Damon is in office now. We have other. Uh, two other fellows who served in office before, other fellows who've run for office, and lots of fellows who are on the campaign trailer in the campaign office in other ways. Um, so thank you guys for this space today. Thank you for all that each of you do. And uh, we look forward to keeping supporting each other and keeping these conversations going. Fantastic. Awesome. Before we all log off, can we take a quick picture, please?